Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this particular video, I'm going to be comparing one of these to one of these. Okay, so the point of this test is to take a professional, fairly expensive audio interface and compare its results to exactly the same thing running through a budget cheap device. Now, the Focusrite is like a proper pro interface. It's like got a ton of IO options on it. It's a preamp. And probably more importantly for this particular test, it's also got phantom power on it. Now, the, the, the Saramonic on the, the other hand, it's like it's nowhere near the price and generally is not considered to be in the same ballpark as far as like audio capabilities are concerned. But what the Saramonic does do is give us phantom power in the first instance and then also analog preamplification. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two takes. The focus right is going to be recorded into the computer and then I'll I'll resync that back to this camera's video. And then when I do the Saramonic test, what that's going to do is just plug straight into the camera. So what I'm doing, it's going to be one's going to emulate like an exter external field recorder and the other one is going to emulate well not even emulate, it's going to be a microphone plugged via a tiny, you know, tiny preamp straight into the camera. So what I'll do, I'll do two vocal tests with them, and then I'll do just a couple of kind of silence tests. Now, the microphone I'm going to use is the Rode NT5, and what's really important about this is that although the NT5 may not be considered as a dialogue or, or voice mic, although I personally do use it for that, it is the most quietest microphone I've had, and it's quite possibly the, one of the most quietest microphones I've ever used. So what it will do, it will definitely give us like every opportunity to hear what these preamps are going to add to the sound if they do add anything. Okay, so I'll crack on with the tests, and then I'll come back for the summary. This is the focus, right? and the NT5 is connected via an XLR cable and the Focusrite is powering back through phantom power. Once the Focusrite signal has entered the computer, it's been recorded by EDIUS, which is the editing software that I use. Now, what's important to note about that is that there is only one analog gain stage and that's done by the Focusrite, as opposed to the Saramonic, which actually has two analog gain stages. One is the Saramonic and then one is the actual camera itself as well with its internal microphone input. So technically speaking, this is the better take. Whether we hear that difference is down to yourself. Now, beyond that as well, what we've done between me and David Dutchman, in order to get this as best as possible, we've been doing multiple short, quick tests between both the systems in order to try and get the best level going in. Once we've achieved that, once we're in the edit system, we just put them on the same track. And then what that means is that we're not adding anything else as far as gain is concerned afterwards. And also what we've done, we've exported all that out as an uncompressed WAV file. So that's a 48 kilohertz 16 bit WAV file at the very end. So what we're going to do, if you check the links now below, you will find a, um, a WAV or a link to the WAV file. So you can actually listen to the uncompressed version as well because you might get a better idea off that. The other thing also as well, all the bits that we've used in the test, if you check the links below for them as well, you, there'll be links to like show you where you can go and get more information or where you can buy them and whatnot. And yeah, kind of like, I think I've probably spoken enough now for this particular part of the test, so we'll go on to something else. So I'm now using the Saramonic. And the configuration for this is the NT5 is just connected via a standard XLR microphone cable balanced into the Saramonic unit. And then the Saramonic has then got its own built-in cable for the output. Now, what's worth mentioning here is that the Saramonic is traditionally designed for the likes of smartphones. So although it has a 3.5 millimeter male jack coming out the back of it to plug into, the, the, into whatever device it's going into, that socket is actually a TRRS. 
And what that is, that, that's a special socket designed to carry headphones and microphone information down the one cable. So in order to make this work on a standard microphone input, I have to use a little splitter. And what that does, it just simply splits into two sides. One side's got a headphone cable on and the other side's got a microphone cable on. So that's basically the configuration and workflow for the way that this is now connected. It's also worth mentioning at this point that regardless of whether or not it's the NT5 being tested through the Saramonic or through the actual Focusrite, um, it's all done without any processing. Yeah, so even the Sennheiser for doing like the overhead boom, what the, the, the overhead boom takes, all the takes, every one of them, there's no compressing, no limiting. And then when I go into post into the edit system, there's no sweetening in any way. So there's no extra EQ, you know, there's no normalizing of the actual dialogue sections of the test. Um, and basically you have to do this because if you're trying to show how good something is, you can't be processing it. So right now what you're hearing is the exact audio as it should be, not an added to it and not taken away. Yeah, so that's probably, you know, all I can say or that's all I need to say about this part of the test. This is now the Rode NT5 and it's running through a Focusrite Scarlett AT&I 20. It's also being powered by the Focusrite, and then the Focusrite is plugged into the PC, and it's being recorded by Steinberg's Cubase version 8. The project settings within Cubase are 48 kilohertz and 24 bits for the recording bit depth and the sampling frequency. Then what I'm going to do, as you will see right now, is I'm just going to resync that particular audio to the live picture that I've been recording as I'm doing the voiceover. So this will be exactly the same as using an external professional audio recorder on a film or video shoot and then resync that audio back to the picture in post. This is the Rode NT5 plugged directly into the Saramonic Smart Rig, and then the Smart Rig is plugged into the Sony AX100 camcorder. Now, inside the AX100, the mic gain is set right down to one, so all the gain that's occurring is done by the Saramonic, and also the Saramonic is sending power to the NT5. Now, this is typical of like a low budget shoot where you plug a microphone direct into a camera without using a field recorder for the audio. Okay, so yeah, there's the test and I'm fairly sure that anyone who's just listened all the way through all of them carefully and hopefully maybe with headphones or on good speakers, I think the first thing you're going to turn around and say to yourself is, what was the difference? Now, I'm not going to say that one was better than the other um, because there's a couple of things in there which would determine you know, whether you personally found one better than, than the other. Um, but the one thing that I could definitely say is neither of them were bad. And probably more importantly is neither one introduced any, any extra hiss um, or any extra distortion, nothing like that. So basically we've just compared a Focusrite to a Saramonic. Now the Focusrite is about £400, something in that region, maybe $500. And the Saramonic is like £23, $23. And, you know, the other thing is, one of them is like deemed a professional audio workflow, and the other one is just deemed more of a budget workflow. Now, each to their own. I personally don't like using external audio recorders, and that's because when I get into post, because most, most of the stuff that I do, I do it on my own. I mean... With this, in the, with this particular video here, I'm actually, my friend David Utchman is actually helping me with it. Um, but usually I'm on my own doing these things. So the last thing I want to be doing is carting too much equipment around doing my little one-man band thing. And that would mean having to set up a separate audio recorder. Now, that's in the shoot element. But when I go into post, again, I want to turn these things around as quick as I can and, you know, get a feel for it straight away. And there's nothing worse than going into post and having to, like, marry up video and audio tracks and then 
recombine them and then start editing. So for me personally, for these types of videos that I do, and generally for anything where I would do, uh, say interview stuff or any kind of, anything that would be kind of like documentary style kind of like recording, I want to go straight into the camera. Now, in, in this particular instance, my Sony records in uncompressed audio format or so recording in a WAV format. So straight away, it's capable of like recording in a pro audio format. And its internal preamplifier is actually really good. Right now, this microphone, which is a Sennheiser ME66, is going straight into the actual Sony. So there's no preamp and external going on here. So this show you how good the Sony is. So in the instance where you've got a camera which has got like you know a really good preamp anyway, and you can go straight in, but it doesn't have phantom power, as in mine doesn't. Um, if I need to attach a microphone which is not self-powered, because the ME66 is self-powered, which is why I can use it straight in, but in an instance where I want to use, you know, a condenser which isn't, that's when I've got to use a power supply, which then is the Saramonic. And also to boot. It gains it as well and gains it amazingly well. Yeah, so anyway, that's just my take on recording external audio or the convenience of going straight into a camera. But like I said, regardless, both of the recordings or both both of the systems recorded extremely well. Now, it'd be interesting if anybody wants to kind of write any comments up here to see, you know, which way they lean one way or the other. But I think we can all agree is that, you know, if you're looking for a budget audio interface, there really is no reason to go or, or start spending anything beyond the Saramonic. Anyway, so I hope you liked this video. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching it. Take care. Goodbye now.